it's never too late to open StarCraft 2. The ladder loves you back. I don't know about that. On the left-hand side, up some inting again is our blue team. We have got a Falstead, Joanna, Urel, Sylvanas, and Brightwing. Over on the right, we've got uh, damage providers. I'm going to go with, uh, that is probably the fun phonetic way to pronounce it. They're going to be playing an Alex Draws, Mephisto, Diablo, Blaze, and Hun Soap. So my, predict my, my question to all of you is how many Q stacks, how many Gathering Storm stacks will Falstead have by the end of the game? You know the dealio, you know how we do things. Welcome into Division 1 of Heroes Lounge. Let's get into the mid lane, let's get into our first engagement, see how things will explode. They could play Mindhawk's custom campaign, it's relevant. All in from Stark. You know, if I do run out of casting, we can go over and do uh, Heart of the Swarm real scale. I'm a third, halfway, a quarter. I'm a percentage through that playthrough. <laughs> Stark all in on uh, with 5.5k it looks like, or actually that's not just Stark, there's 5.5k on 168 or less, so if you want to play them odds, you've got a chance for it. Mephisto will be going on Unyielding Power level 1, you've got a Target Practice Hanzo, looking at Alex Straza with a Circle of Life, gonna be building up those Regeneration Globes stacks to then summon Regeneration Globe with her Abundance every single time. And that's gonna synergize with the assumed level 4k, uh, Level 4 pickup for Mephisto. Shard of Hate is often the later talent you see, but we could see Hysteria. There's some great synergies with that. L Dog is L fine. I tried my best. It's early. I'll uh, I'll blame I'll blame the What was it? It was the three minute rush that I got hit with yesterday in ZVZ. I'll blame that guy. I'll blame that guy who DM'd me and apologized. <laughs> oh, is there really no believers? Wow, this is awkward. First blood will go over to the side of Upsaminting again. I'll be killing the blaze in the top lane. Meanwhile, down in the bottom, Father Coke. A name. That is a name right there. Getting pulled around by fish a little bit, but not gonna invade the camp. Mind talk trying to poke out here and there's seven stacks currently. Hey, we got matching prediction right at the end. All right, I like to see it. We got some odds, it doesn't go to the Bezos void. Top lane getting run down currently by Urel Savannah's bright wing. Seems like Drac backs, up, backs off for a second or two. Marl Karks. Gonna be able to back off while Gaflo picks up maybe a stack or so more. What are we looking at for Hanzo stacking? He needs to hit one of the enemy heroes one time. To be able to get the 30% range, still has to work through all those other stacks, it does look like. Your shrine will be active soon. Prepare yourselves for the slaughter. I voted one to try my luck and then someone sniped a 5.5 bid. <laughs> or bet. Speaking of bids, we do have our our bid as well. We're currently bidding or uh, selling paintings through online auctions, so if you want to check it out, exclamation bid four. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, welcome. These VODs do go up on YouTube, so if you're having fun over there, be sure to hit like and subscribe and all that good stuff, because we are getting into our first objective phase of the game. Gonna be a Frozen Punisher in the bottom lane, 19 stacks currently on the Falstad, but I expect those to rapidly rise here around the Arcane Punisher, as this is where everyone should be grouped up, but... Speaking of people grouping up, top lane has a rotation in from Sylvanas. Captain Rex looking to close the distance. No, actually, not going to close the distance. I thought I saw a haunting wave being thrown out, but not the animation I was correctly looking at. All right, back down to the objective phase. Currently have Mind Talk working on the camp on the left-hand side, not wanting to step in. Fish anchoring in the bush just below, going to avoid the fires. Oh, no. Didn't avoid the fire stomp. GG, well played. Fish lost it. Just kidding. Uh, Tarbrush? Torbrush? Tarbrush. Tarbash. Tarbash. Pops the Alex Draws a Dragon Queen form. Mindhawk jumping to 26 stacks here. Diablo with an initiation into the URL. Marl Karks has to back away with an Avenging Wrath trying to get some more skeletal defenders. And Mephisto jumping in with his Durance or his Lightning Nova. Able to snipe a few more of those skeletal defenders. 32 to 24 in, core, in, in skeletal defenders, not core HP. That would be wild. That would mean we're on. 
Towers of Doom, but it is a first objective coming in for Upsiminting again. A haunting wave in from Captain Rex, who has the sustained damage burst ability from Mindhawk, will solidify a kill into Diablo. And another kill, make it a solidified double kill. I do believe I said arcane, I meant frozen. Frozen Punisher for the bottom lane, my apologies. Sylvanas, does she have black arrows up and available? Yes, she does. She'll pop those maybe in a sec. No, actually, just going to let the Punisher tank a lot of this damage. Did I see that right? Yeah, she's got black arrows. A little surprised by that. I guess the minion wave plus Punisher confirms this, so why not hold on to the black arrows and maybe uh, split siege into mid lane to open things up? Because top lane's already been opened up from the earlier pressure. Rapid decay of this fort front gate. Looking things looking really good for up cementing again. Alex Straza will get her circle of life level one finished out, so she will now spot a regeneration globe with every abundance. Captain Rex gets the haunting wave and a phase shift from Brightwing with 10 talents here about to come through. Let's take a look at the damage, healing, and experience for both these teams here in map number one of our first division. Excuse me, of our first best of three of the day. All right, Mortar, Punisher for the mid lane. The gate's already been mostly taken down. We still have one little tower up and available. Fort in top lane, eh, around 50%. And Blaze will soak up things in bottom lane. Three to zero in kills and upside hunting, uh, upside hunting, upside inting again, actually makes it a fourth kill here, pushing further ahead in that experience. Savannah's activates black arrows to try and get some siege on this mid lane fort, knowing that Mortar Punisher's right around the corner here. And I mean, why not? You got a 10 talent tier advantage. The enemy team's still level away from their 10s. You have those black arrows from Sylvanas and a kill into Diablo. Not too bad. The face shift from Brightwing activated onto Captain Rex, I think, down towards the bottom lane. Yurel pushed up another wave into top lane fort, and that is down to about a third. Good damage in from Gaff, but unable to get a kill into Sylvanas. Speaking of kills, Bash! Didn't see the origin location, thought they had somehow gotten peeled so far away from a safe area. But nah, the Shade of Mephisto origin location was safely by the fort. And Bash is going to be able to poke in here and there. Unfortunately, the mid lane fort does fall. Rel comes running on in with a Righteous Hammer. But she doesn't have anyone to collide with. Does have that Righteous Momentum. Game 5% movement speed. Urel no longer is slowed while channeling Righteous Hammer. Instead, it is, uh, this bonus is quadrupled. I don't know how to do that math, so someone in chat can do it, absolutely. Righteous Hammer bops the Diablo. Jeplesh shield right into the face of a Jet Propulsion from Blaze. The Lifebinder Alexstrasza will be activated. Durance of Hate is stunned out. I did not know you could Righteous Hammer a Durance of Hate channel, but today we got it here on stream. Nicely done from Mario Karx. Interrupting that, oh my god, no way. Drac lives with a blink heal over to an ally. Holy crap, 52 stacks by the by on that false set. Top lane fort sitting on how much HP? It's gonna be 258. 105 to 120? No way, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Next you're gonna tell me that I need to build lurkers. Cause they're the best thing against tanks. <laughs> Then you're gonna tell me that roaches will get me to Grandmaster. Only build roaches, nothing else. <laughs> Apparently that guy argued with Ninja in like DMs or something was like, well, Chestnut are saying the same thing. I'm like, I doubt it, <laughs> I doubt it. Oh God, that was, that was, that was too funny to, to just watch yesterday. Darren's of Fate will collide this time. Unfortunately, it's not going to get the setup they're looking for. Father Coke should go down. Diablo doesn't have souls to consume. How? Where? Oh my god. 99 souls, but no buyback. Oh, feels bad, man. Fish over here does go down. Captain Rex looking for the big YouTube play. Got to be able to get a blink heal from Drac in time. Does take down the Hanzo. Righteous Hammer into Eldog, who does fall. And Tarbash. Mind talk, do you go in for it? No, the barrel roll to safety. It still is a delectable. 
or the side of up cementing again. Falstad goes to top lane immediately with a flight, pushing down the fort. 64 stacks for Falstad currently. 34 on Mephisto's unyielding power. Sorry, I was trying to remember the name of the talent off the top of my head. Target practice from Hanzo's at four stacks. Let's actually break the game really quickly and find out what he's missing. It is three hits onto Falstad. Oh my god, that is not flaming the player by any means. That's rough. A good positioning from Mind Talk. Bit of a rough go from Gaff right there. We'll see how it all works out. No, you need to go 82 racks marine. Oh, that's what I need to do. 82 racks marine. That guy was like, dude, how are marines so OP? <laughs> Meanwhile, you're just spamming rats. God, that was so funny to watch. I was I was cracking up for that. Stark was sending me some old, some old StarCraft II uh, games he played, and there was a game where he played some Terran and built 82 racks. Jet propulsion into the face of Mind Talk. We have a Dragon's Arrow that will go through the enemy team. Just gonna part the Red Sea, part the Arrow Sea? Nope, I don't got anything for that one. But the mid lane keep does go down. The momentum is huge here for up cementing again. All right. Thirty-eight stacks for Mephisto. He's un almost done with unyielding power. Subdue is unfinished. No subdone. Uh, critterize. Okay. Well, we're on the we're on the road for twenty talents here. We'll wait a few more minutes. I want to let you all uh, see the other talents because we kind of just got thirteens for damage providers. But I'll cycle through the other numbers as well. Let's we'll take a look at the late game damage healing experience. Next Punisher going to be that arcane Punisher in the bottom lane. See how this is going to work out for up cementing again. I just realized my DPI was up. I was moving my mouse. I was like, I'm, I don't know why. I feel like I'm moving across the map so quickly here. There we go. That's that's more comfortable. Unyielding power is done. Uh, Diablo doesn't get the life binder in time. He does consume his souls though. Back from death right now. He is 25 in the pocket. He also did go into soul to flame. With those fire stomps. The bottom lane fort impalers are hitting Hanzo. The arrow does not connect again. Impalers are low. Gus pushes away the enemy. Our defender was activated. Okay, it works out. Urel still healed up to nearly full, and the bottom lane keep goes down. And the Arcane Punisher will be up and available soon. Camps left, right, bottom, the minute and a half or so. Top right could be grabbed or stolen away. As I mentioned, we're going to cycle through those numbers while we're waiting for 16 talent here to hit on the side of uh, our red squad. And no invade onto the camp. Okay. No invade onto the camp. All right. Uh, Mindhawk delaying. Just gonna wait for the top lane clear, I guess. Brightwing face shift, I assume, is off cooldown. Yes, it is. Diablo maybe looking for a flank here into Brightwing. Did they see Brightwing? No, they didn't. She, she's been floating around over here in this, in this no man's land. There's no vision, so. I was like, that, it'd be insane if Diablo knew she was there. That would've been wild. I think she showed in the bottom wave, but then started to back away, so. Anyways, camp will be grabbed. Frozen Punisher, Arcane Punisher for the bottom lane. Could be game ending. Core is exposed through that bottom. So, damage providers could get themselves some decent siege through bottom lane. Would take down the fort, maybe get keep front gate, depending on how many kills go along with that. But the 16 talent here is here. You'll see that in just a second. There it is. Mephisto, full skull, missile build. Over on the right-hand side, Gaff is split from their team. Alex Straza doesn't want to pop the life binder just yet. Gets a good chunky heal. Falstad split pushing in the top lane currently with 69 stacks on the Gathering Storm. Catapult has arrived through mid lane onto the core as well. Big blessed shield. Mindhawk flies in. Gust into the wall with the wind tunnel coming through as well. 
Bunker arrives from Blaze. Big group up of the enemy, and Dragon Zero will connect. Mindhawk has to barrel roll out of the Apocalypse from Diablo. And Bash looks to jump in onto Captain Rex, but can't solidify a kill. Captain Rex able to run away here. Ardent Defender activated just in time for Yorel. False dead poking in here and there. L Dog with a big bash into the face, and Yorel does fall in this moment. Collision course level 13 helping out with that extra damage. And the Arcane Punisher will go over the side of damage providers. Nicely done. They get the kill into Yorel. 50 seconds on her death timer. 98 on her Ardent Defender. Fish eats the jump with an Iron Skin. Hanzo finishes out his level 1. And then Mephisto says it's time for the bird to go into the oven. Falstad falls. And that is a kill over to our Red Squad who looked to run through bottom. A staggered death on Falstad is huge here. The Punisher is getting low on HP. And I do believe we should confirm the keep front gate. I don't know if they step beyond this. Unless unless up Upside Minting again lives up to their name. Another Iron Skin eaten by Fish there. Unless Upside Minting lives up to their name, I do believe we get keep front gate and then a disengage through bottom. That is what I would expect. Uh, Father Coke is looking to jump in here. 25 on Falstad. Punisher does expire. Mephisto jumps in really quickly. Condemned from Fish, but they get some poke onto the keep and will now leave. Nicely done. That's huge. That's huge. Periodic catapult pressure alleviated, or at least periodic catapult pressure added to the bottom lane. 376 HP left on that top lane keep, if you are wondering. That is a small amount. Scatter poke here and there. 79 stacks for Falstad's level one. Maybe I made the gamble too high. Mindhawk is split soaking, doing a fantastic job. I'm curious really quickly. It's uh, this button, I believe. 9,392 9, experience for the team. But Sylvanas and Urel, I mean, dear lord, they're pulling in chonky experience. Look at the blaze on the opposing side with uh, over 16.5. Nicely done. Nicely done. All right. Half a level to go for 20 talent here. And oops, ups, I'm minting again. Looking to play with that advantage. Damage providers. Just gonna back away. Wait for that half a level to show up. Frozen Punisher will be top lane next. Can just wait for the waves to crash in. Also, Gaff with the extended range from his level one and the explosive arrows and the piercing arrow gets some good poke for these waves. Blaze maybe considering to check camp. Sonic Arrow as well. That 20 talent here, almost here. All right. We have target, excuse me, we have Bullseye. Oh, it was attempted right there. It would have been good. Unfortunately, Yurel used one of her 13 different self cleanses. Ooh, we have the Life Binder upgrade at level 20. The Ritual of Life Life Binder activates three times over six seconds. You'll see the Unspeakable Horror. You'll also have the Hellgate and the Fortified Bunker. No Dragon upgrade for Alexstrasza. She's not E-Build, so it makes sense just to upgrade the Life Binder. More healing chonkiness. Especially if you get... Target, single target wind tunneled against the wall. Life Binder reactivating a couple times might be a good way to have multiple health bars in a sense. 82 on the Falstad. He's got to basically double his stacks currently. He's got to double them and then a little bit more actually based on our gamble. I made this a little too high. It's Division 1. I was like, oh, these are really good players. They'll stack out of their mind. A lot of pressure applied onto Yorel, but she does not go down. Wind Tunnel into the corner here. Doesn't get the best split they're looking for. Bunker activated by Blaze. Not sure if it was needed. Apocalypse from Diablo. I think it might have connected onto Brightwing, but it doesn't really matter. There's no follow-up. This drops a Bless Shield. Here comes a Dragon's Arrow, followed up by a beautiful Bullseye from Gaff, getting some layered stuns onto the enemy. And that does provide a window for the allies to back away. Hellgate forward, unfortunately. Yurel still has our defender. 
and she's able just to back away. Oh, uh, that's a weird interaction between Jeff Propulsion and Righteous Hammer. Meanwhile, in bottom lane, False Dead Sylvanas decided to end the game, and the backs are being denied. I don't think I don't think they stall this. I mean, it's a False Dead Sylvanas Brightwing on core. I don't think Blaze has got enough defenses. Urel does fall. That you know what? They get that kill. Unfortunately, though. The core has been opened up, and Upside Minting again has found their way to victory here on map number one. GG, well played. All right, how many stacks for Falstead? He had a hundred and, just kidding, he had 92. He had 92. All right, payout's been made. Well then, 92. Did we go up in sub count? Were we at 277 and now we're at 278 all of a sudden? Hmm. Secret little, we got a secret sub, I guess. I don't have an alert on my thingy. So we got a secret sub today. As a reminder, uh, if you if you are resubscribing and you're not triggering it, be sure to trigger your resubscriptions because they do go into the raffle for the Baja Ross giveaway. Uh, so if you if you are sneaking if you're sneaking a resub in, be sure to trigger it so that way I do know to add a ticket in for you. Because otherwise, there's no way for me to know. Uh, this one. All right, players did not swap sides. That's always good. We're going to Battlefield of Eternity. Do we have any fun gambles for this map? Let's see. Do we have any fun little gambles we can do? Um, bum 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 bum. No level ones, no baseline. I guess we can skip the gamble for this game. We can skip the gamble for this game. Why not? All right. I ran a small little block of ads. Those seem to be just about done. And we can get into our next map. Let's go ahead and do it. Here we go. Map number two in our first best of three of the day. We are getting into okay, Battlefield so of Eternity. On the left-hand side, we've got Upside Minting again with a score of one in this best of three series, looking to close things out in a quick 2-0. We'll have to see if they're able to do that with an Artanis, Diablo, Cassia, Hogger, Lucio. Where is Crush? The people got Artanis. And it's 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 also amateur opponent, too. They didn't go Protector of Ire on Battlefield of Eternity. On the left hand or excuse me, on the right hand side, we got damage providers, a Grey Main, Brightwing, Joanna, Yurel, Li Ming. We're going to be trying to make us, take us, travel us into a map number three, as I said, into this first best of three of the day here in Heroes Lounge Division One. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for being here. Thanks for lurking chat and all that good stuff. And uh, no gamble for this game, but we will do gambles for other games. I just didn't really see anything fun to make a prediction on, so we skip. We could have done, like, who gets first immortal, but nah, whatever. Mostly because I probably would have forgotten. Probably. Phase shift activated by Brightwing. We'll be able to connect into Joanna in time. Father of Coke trying to back away. Blade Dash from Artanis lands the phase prism. And first kill will be into Joanna. Greyman gets the counter kill, but he's smooshed up against the wall. Cassia is able to land herself a dynamic double kill. Looking to jump in here. Just going to focus on to the wave. All right. Jumping back into bottom lane. Do you want to point out, Cassia did go charge strikes at level one. Gained 15% attack speed. Ev uh, gained 15% attack speed, period. Every third basic attack deals 20% bonus damage and bounces to nearby enemy heroes. Typically, it's the Thunderstroke at level one we see. Building up those Q stacks. But I like the charge strikes here for Battlefield of Eternity. Faster attack speed, little bounce, little extra damage. Potential ca uh, pot uh, potential to, to find a kill. You also can tell, I believe, when that third auto is going to happen. 
if you take a look at her spear, you can see, I believe it becomes uh, electrified. Is that right? Hold on. No, no, it, it doesn't. Because there's a couple... Oh no, I miss I'm I'm confusing. Okay, I do think there's a visual for charge strikes, but I'm also confusing her thunder fury as well. Thunder fury, lightning strokes. Lightning fury. God dang it, I never remember Cassius Q. But some of those animations look very similar. So there I think there is a visual for the charge strikes. Looking cool on that one. Anyways, back into the top lane. We have a fight over here. Cassie did rotate up. Gonna try and get that kill onto Greymane. Hogger bounces off the fort front gate, but can't get enough damage. Yeah, it's um between, cause, cause the animation's semi-similar between the auto and the lightning fury. Camp on the right, camp on the left. Bandit, what's up? <laughs> what you doing? You want to talk to? You want to tell everyone about about your day? L dog jumping in here. No invade onto the camp. Actually, okay, yeah, no, the camp was grabbed. I thought there was one minion still left, and they delayed it out, but not the case. Speaking of, look at these. Look at these camp timings. Beautifully done. Camp's getting into lane as the objectives have just been activated. Diablo 400 HP. Drac has a sound wave to push back Joanna. A singular shield glare wouldn't have killed. Maybe a double shield glare. We can maybe check Joanna's damage on shield glare really quickly. Uh, no, it wouldn't have killed. Diablo had 400 HP and they're only dealing 72. Unless it's not factoring in the level one. I don't think it's. I don't think it's additive. I still don't think it would have been enough. It still. It still wouldn't have been enough. Two. Two of those at 75% increase. Still wouldn't have been. Diablo would have been on just a tiny chunk of HP. So, we have our race side immortals. Things are looking pretty good for up cementing again. They got their Artanis with Protector, not Protector of Iron, with Amateur Opponent shredding through the slicing. He's dicing. Cassia Charge Strike's working out very well. Gray Man on the right hand side tries to race things down. It doesn't work out, and the fight still continues on Father of Coke. Father, Father of Coke. Father Coke. Joanna getting smooshed, Urel getting pushed around, and here comes Alarian for the top lane. Wait a second. Lucio running it down. Swap on the gaff. And Lee Ming gets a big ball. Diablo gonna answer with a shadow charge, but she's able to blink away. All right. So this immortal with its shielding rapidly decaying. Hogger pushes in bottom lane. Mindhawk a little bit low here. Needs to get some heals from Lucio. Polymorph on to Diablo. I think he's looking to step up and find a Shadow Charge angle. Brightwing denies that with the Polymorph. Top lane fort is getting low. Couldn't see the health bar for a second. Down to a third, maybe actually even less. Down to zero HP. Artanis dashing around here, but the Immortal will expire. And a hard rotation into bottom lane. Try and take down this fort. Oh, my apologies. I didn't even see that in the rotation. There was there was a re-engagement. I was just looking at Yorel for a second. I was like, oh, she's clearing things just fine. Li Ming, Grey Ming go down in the bottom lane. Mindhawk looking to push down the fort with some allies. Bo Kofi, thank you for the follow. Okay. Very well done so far. Oh, the 10 talent tiers almost here, so let's cycle through those numbers. We'll have Hogger get a top lane camp. Fallen Shaman on the left and right are up just about a minute. Actually, less than a minute on both of those. Diablo gets a great shadow charge into Joanna. She activates Iron Skin. Eldog with a righteous hammer into the face of a few enemies as Drac amps it up with Lucio. Cassia still chasing into Gaff, who gets the phase shift from Brightwing. Li Ming throws an Arcane Orb back. And now Diablo has reduced soul consumption. We'll consume 75 of his 100 souls as he's hit level 10. We have a Lightning Breath, Suppression Pulse, Ball Lightning, Shockwave, and high fives from Lucio. I'm going to head to the gem. If you're still casting when I'm back, I'll join in. 
I'll be going for a while, bud. Unless you're gonna be at the gym for the next five and a half hours. <laughs> uh, the average the average stream duration is six you hours, so I don't know how swole you're gonna go get, but we'll probably be here. <clears throat> Fire stomps out from Diablo, looking to just get some vision for his allies as the 10 talent here is still not achieved by damage providers. Here comes another Diablo initiation with the Shadow Charge Ball Lightning playing volleyball with a few enemy heroes. Gray Man has to back away. Suppression Pulse blinding him for just a few more seconds. Has to get the Well Tap. Actually, it doesn't look like Gray Man has the Well Tap available. Gonna try and just get some AoE heals from that Bright Wing as the objective phase has moved into second phase. Yes, it has. Moved in second phase, and this is a huge immortal win. For upside minting again. We'll go into, I believe, the bottom lane. Uh, no, we'll go into the top lane. That's that's uh, more well defended. But let's take a look at the fight. Diablo looking to steal away this camp over here on the right hand side of the map. We've got an Artanis jumping in with a phase prism, blade dash, a kill into Brightwing, a camp stolen away, and the immortal moves into top. Alarian looking to knock on Keep Front Gate with a full bar of shielding, a whole lot of HP. I'm gonna quickly just grab the Immortal for some stats and see what we've got going on damage and shielding wise. 16,200 points of health and shielding. 1,236 damage into structures. Here we go. Oh yeah, I'll still be streaming for 40 and 50 minutes, yeah. I usually, I usually, the earliest I like to end stream is 3 p.m. My time. Midnight CEST. That is the earliest I, 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 I try and end my stream. I like to go later if I can. Condemned from Joanna, high-fived away by Lucio. We still have a lot of HP left on this Immortal, which is barreling through the top lane. It's actually taking down the entire fort, right, or the keep right now. Still with shielding available, that's the crazy part to me. We're eight and a half minutes in, Encore here in Division One. Of the members of Upsiminting again, made a new land speed record on this map. Maybe for Heroes Lounge. I don't know what the records are for Heroes Lounge, but this is looking like it's going to be a beautifully done speed run map by the side of Upside Minting. Again, they finished the map at 8 minutes and 54 seconds in game time.